Hi, welcome to The Watch List. I'm your host, Jim Jocko. Bank of England announced this week that it'll be keeping interest rates at their historic record lows for yet one more month. This went as expected with the base rate holding at 0.5%. Clearly, keeping cost of borrowing low continues to be a priority, while concerns over China have led to more caution. The question is now is, what is the U.S. thinking? With the FOMC meeting on deck for next week, scheduled for September 16th and 17th, there's a lot of predictions flying around right now, but with the BOA holding steady, a rate hike from the Fed is feeling less likely. As one of the most referenced underlyings in structured products and ETFs, all eyes were on Apple as shares continue to feel some pressure after the new products announcements were unveiled. Widely anticipated was the new version of the iPhone, Apple TV, and Apple Watch. But now all the buzz is around the iPad Pro and reviews are mixed. The market seems underwhelmed and Bloomberg is suggesting that Apple is being a consumer electronics company depend, uh, trying to defend its market share, bringing nothing new to the table and copying what Microsoft and Samsung has already done. But we'll be keeping a close eye on analyst consensus for this underlying going into the future. And finally, Risk Magazine is out with a new study this week looking at trends amongst banks and how they're uh, pricing and managing capital into their derivative trades. The overall tone of the survey and accompanying article is derivative trading is becoming so expensive, especially for long-dated derivatives, and the mathematics, si uh, simulation, and predictive analytics required to apply KVA correctly is becoming completely overwhelming. The article suggests that the precise way to do this is via a nested Monte Carlo simulation, which of course is extremely complex and time-consuming. The easier option of approximation methods may not be as effective, so this is clearly an area to watch. I'm Jim Joggle. Take care.